Yo, what up, homies? This is video four in a series about testing, but it is part two on unit testing without a framework. And what we're gonna do now is discuss the inevitable evolution that testing will take, and that is, let's say we're writing a new test. So we might come into this test that we already have, this class for testing, the sum function we already have, and we might create a new function. In fact, let's just go ahead and copy this function. Let's get rid of this now because we don't need it anymore. All right. So we're going to write a new test to either test the same function um, or test a different function in, this, in the same class any number of reasons. Any possible combination of reasons exist as to why you might create a new function, as well as the infinite amount of reasons why you might just straight up create a whole new class and a whole new file to test a completely different class that has nothing to do with summing two numbers. So you can see where this goes, right? You're writing code, you're testing it. You write more code, you need to write more tests. So you've got probably as many files for testing and functions for testing and classes for testing as you do actual code itself. Um, you know, and if you're covering all your code, that's probably about how it'll end up. So invariably with what we've built here so far, if we created test two, and I'm not gonna change any internal code for now, we'll just leave it there, we'll hit save. If we wanted to run this test, Obviously, we've got to go update our run tests.php. We have to do something like, uh, and I don't know why I put echo on this in the first video. We really don't need it. But we got to do something like this. Test2 arrow, test2 function, save, and then run it. All right, now we'll run the next test. But do you really want to update two files at least at this rate? every time you write a new test? No, you're not gonna write tests if you know that you have to maintain this list of tests and come back into the run tests function and do all that nonsense. You're not gonna do it. You're gonna give up testing in about five tests and you're gonna say this is stupid and you'll probably go over to a framework and start learning that and you know PHP unit or some other testing framework and bash your skull against that for a while, which does make things easier, but you also have to learn the framework. So it's a bit of a double-edged sword in this person's opinion. Meaning moi. All right, so enough rambling. How do we fix this? Well, it's actually not all that terrible. So we've got, uh, you know, we're requiring the class in, so, you know, we've obviously, or we're requiring the file in, excuse me. We're requiring the file in, we're instantiating a new class or initializing whatever, you guys know what I mean. And then we're running the functions inside that class. You definitely don't want to do this for every new file, for every new class, for every new function. Anyway, I'm rambling again. So let's do this. We are going to write a couple comments here. We're going to get, uh, actually, sorry, we're going to require all tests in the directory of tests. All right, so we're gonna do that. And then we're going to load slash init, whatever the hell you wanna call it, all the classes that exist inside those files that we required. Yeah, I am, I'm talking and typing at the same time. Yeah, I know. I'm nuts, but I'm okay with being nuts. Uh, okay, so we're gonna require all the files, we're gonna load all the classes, and then we're going to loop through each class that's been loaded and run the tests inside that class. Now, that's a mouthful, and obviously there's gonna be more, so you really gotta 
loop through each class and then kind of come down here and run each test. Each test inside the class. All right. So let's go ahead and do this. We're going to actually go ahead and just wipe this right out of here. We are not going to need this where we are going. We're not going to need it. It's all going to be automatic. You just write tests and then you run this file and it spits out results. So let's get started with requiring all the files into. Bear with me, guys. I promise it'll all be worth it. All right, scander tests. Right? As dollar file name. Open and close that curly brace. Never forget it. All right, we're going to do dollar path equals, and we're going to do tests slash. We're going to append the file name. Okay? So far, so good. Basically, we're looping through every file in the directory. We're creating a path that includes the file name. And then we're going to double check that it's actually file. So we're going to go if is file. And then we'll dollar path, throw it in there, right? Open and close them curly braces like you do. And then we're going to try. Not sure how necessary this try catches, but we're going to do it just so that, you know, Maybe it won't completely break all the tests that run if in case you try to require a file that doesn't end up uh, parsing right or something. And I actually, a parse error probably would fail completely anyway. But you get what I'm trying to do here, right? Echo, dollar $E, arrow, get message. Right? Okay. And then require dollar path. Okay. So there's that section right there. That's it. We've now required every file in the entire directory. Let's move on to actually getting the classes. So MySQL, or excuse me, wow, that was a slip. PHP um, has a function called get declared classes that will give you all the classes that have been loaded on a given script. Uh, and there's two things that we got to consider here. PHP comes with classes already loaded by default in any installation. So how do we separate the classes that are loaded by default from the classes that we loaded looping through this test directory? Well, before we loop through the test directory, we do need to grab list of default classes. All right, default classes equals get declared classes, open and close parentheses. All right, I'm going to leave it and put a little comment here just to see what we're doing. Get default classes that are loaded into PHP. Right on. So now that we have the default classes, come down here and we're going to get the fresh classes is what we're going to call it, which is basically just an updated list of all the classes that includes the default classes, right? So get declared classes. All right. Next, we separate it. So we've got our fresh list of classes. We're going to create a new variable called classes. And we're going to do array diff key, which is going to return the difference between uh, fresh classes. So anything's, anything that's in fresh classes that's not in default classes will get returned by this function in PHP. All right, so there we go. We've now got a list of all the classes that we just required from the test directory. Simple enough, right? We're going to loop through each class for each dollar classes uh, as dollar class. How about that? Simple enough, right? 
And let's just throw out an echo into this browser world here of an H4 to just give us a title of the class that we're working with. And we'll do test class colon dollar class, right? <laughs> yes, I like it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Actually, you know what? Let's save that and run this and see what it says. Okay, so you can see that we actually have this my sum class being included in our testing classes, and that is because in our test we're simply requiring it inside the file. So we do have to move this in a location that won't affect uh, how we're going to try to run these tests, and that is inside the class in a function called double underscore construct open and close parenthesis, and we're just going to move this right inside there. And this is a practice that we'll have to continue to do in our testing when we're creating test classes so that the requirement of the class that you want to test doesn't affect the tests themselves. All right, so we did that, we saved, we refreshed, there we go. So now we just have our test classes. Let's go back to this and continue on. So we've got our test classes. Uh, now let's instantiate them. We'll call this instance equals new dollar class. And there we go, we've got an instance. And then we're gonna, this is gonna be a function that we're gonna write, so bear with me. We're gonna run tests on that instance. Dollar instance, right? You guys with me so far? And this is where we come back down to here to run each test inside the class, right? Function run tests dollar instance. Yes. No, nope, that's not a curly brace. Give me a curly brace. Okay, open and close the curly braces. Now, PHP has these wonderful helper functions where we can get class methods. And this will return all the methods that are inside this class. So we're going to pop in the instance that we just created. And now we've got tests plural. Got to have that terminology correct. And now we're going to loop through each of those tests, right? So dollar tests as dollar test. See where the plurality helps us out a little bit here when we're doing our for each. Yeah. Okay, for each test as dollar test. And we're going to do another little helper echo. Let's do an H5. Close it. And then we will say uh, test function colon dollar test semicolon. And this is where we'll get a little bit more correct. In the last video, you know, I broke some rules. I was creating li elements that were not inside a ul element. And I really feel bad about that, guys. So I'm going to fix it. I'm going to fix it right now. And we are going to echo a UL because we know that our tests are going to use that assert function that is going to emit list item elements. How about that? See, sometimes I do things and then I, I just I come back and I save the day. I do. Totally kidding. I ruin the day quite often. All right, we're going to put this in a try catch. Exception dollar e. Yes. Echo dollar e. Arrow. Get message just in case it goes wrong. We're going to print it out. Instance, right? So here's where it gets cool. We're going to go instance arrow dollar test open and close parenthesis and that is going to run each function inside our class which contains assert functions 
that assert whether or not, you know, expressions equal what is expected. That's pretty freaking cool. And that's it, guys. Oh, I forgot. I totally forgot. I almost ruined every. See, I don't save the day. I would have ruined it if I had totally forgotten this. Close the unordered list uh, element. Yeah, that's helpful sometimes. Okay, so that's it. Let's save this and run it. And test function construct. That should be not there. Why is that there? Okay, so it looks like we just need to make sure we exclude the construct function. My bad, guys. A little unforeseen hiccup there. So if we just do if dog test equals mm -mm. not totally sure if this is going to work either. But we're going to try it. Continue. Yes. Okay. So we're just skipping the construct function there. But that's it, guys. That's um, the whole thing. Now you can simply write tests in this directory. You can forget all about this run test.php file. Write tests in your test folder or in your class till your heart's content. And you've got yourself a tiny, itty bitty, little mini testing framework or library, whatever you want to call it. The main point being you wrote it, it's incredibly manageable, incredibly small, super lightweight, and you can add what you need and use it and not have a whole lot of extra stuff that you'll never use. All right, that's uh, the conclusion of my little series on testing, guys. I hope this has been good for you. It's been fun for me. Uh, we will probably continue using our little mini testing framework as we begin to write code for other features. Um, yeah, I think we're going to. So we'll see you guys in the next videos. See y'all in the next videos. Peace.